Hey, what up, what up, what up, what up? It's uh, Jawi back at it. So, I wanted to get into this topic today. Uh, it's something that's personal, something that I've lived through and I experienced myself, so I'm speaking from personal experience. And the topic is really about the G code versus the parental code. And um, I know for sure that a lot of us that's out here in the street, that's still out here risking this shit every day, that's out here taking these penitentiary chances, man, we really haven't figured this thing out yet. You know, we still are playing both sides of the fence because I know a lot of guys that's out here that's knee deep in the streets, but yet, you know, they, 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 their parents, their fathers, and they intend to be good fathers. So this is, this, this is a point that I want to make that I've come up with through, you know, just my personal experiences and I, I see why we're failing. This is the concern that I have. This is the issue that I have. That we spend all this time in the street, right? And we doing what we doing. We selling dope. We robbing, jacking niggas, shooting, burning niggas, tearing up shit. You know what I'm saying? Putting on for the turf, putting on for the neighborhood. And if that's the life you choose to live, then, you know, so be it. That's your choice. I think the problem is when we begin having these babies, right? And you begin having children, you got one, you got two, you got three kids now. And, you know, everybody don't intend to bring their kids up in the gang life. I know I got a few partners that's fully into that shit, that they train their kids to come up the same way they did, which I have my personal opinion about that. But that's not what this video is about. Then I also have those that gang bang heavy, they in the streets, they into that, that criminal shit. And they have kids, they have babies, and they kind of try to keep the shit separate, meaning that they go out, they do they want to, they do they dirt, and then they, you know, they come home to be, you know, good fathers or, or the best that they can be. And the problem is that I've always said this, you know, at least when I got a little more enlightened, you know, through my trials and tribulations, through going to prison, you know, facing life sentences, you know, dealing with all of the deaths and just the, the, the damage that I've caused my own family, I've come up with the fact that. At some point, when you're doing both of those, trying to balance them, at some point, they're going to come to a head. And at some point, they're going to meet face to face. And I always say, you know, when I talk to my fellas, I always ask them, you know, like, sometimes when we get into our little deep powwows, I'll ask them, like, you know, when that day come, you know, who's going to win? It's a question that I always ask them. Who's going to win? Because you have some of these, you have certain guys out here who's so crafty, you know, they, they, they'll try to find a way to blend anything. And one thing I've realized, at least from my perspective, from what I've gone through, is that you cannot blend garbage with purity. You cannot blend sin and death with life. You can't blend that shit. It ain't, it's, there's no fine balance between that. And when I mean fine balance, meaning you cannot give your all to both. At some point, one is going to lose. One is going to win. They're going to come head to head, head to head. They're going to meet face to face and you're going to have to make a choice. Now, everybody makes different choices. Everybody is willing to accept certain things. I'm speaking more so for the guys who lean on the side of wanting to be productive fathers. Those, This is the video especially catered to that group of people. Those that want to be good fathers. Those that want to be good men. Not the ones who don't give a fuck because then they don't give a fuck. This ain't for you. Here's the question that I have. And it, it, it really came to me recently, just, you know, I, I get in my think tank and I get to thinking, I get to brainstorming and trying to figure out some of the things, some of my own actions and get, giving myself answers to my own actions. And here's one I came up with. I, I find it funny now when I see guys go to jail, even some of my own homeboys, some guys I don't know, they go to jail, they come home. And nine and a half out of ten times, each and every one of them going to say the same shit. Fuck niggas. You know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't do nothing for me. Niggas ain't write me. Niggas ain't come visit me. Niggas ain't take care of my babies. Niggas ain't hold my household down. And I realized some really crazy shit. It's like two points to this point I'm making. For one, how do we, and I guess this is coming from an accountability perspective. How do we place blame on other niggas to do things for us that we should be doing our damn self. How the hell do we get the audacity to point the finger at the next nigga who didn't go check on your baby, who didn't go drop pampers off to your baby, 
who didn't go check on your wife when your black ass was supposed to be doing that? Because you choose to take all these chances out here every damn day, fucking around with the law. Know that they out here giving these football numbers out here. And yet when you get caught, when you get the, the penalty that come with the game, you want to lash out at everybody like you've been done wrong. That shit's crazy to me. That's crazy to me. The problem with that is we know the type of niggas we dealing with. You see how your homies is when other niggas go to jail and them niggas don't go visit them niggas. You see how your homies are when homies get murdered and burnt up. And that nigga ain't been to that grave site in 10 damn years. You know what type cats you dealing with. But then when you want the other end of that stick, now you, you got this new profound outlook on how niggas supposed to treat you like your black ass special. Well, ain't nobody special in these damn streets, man. Ain't nobody special in these streets. The streets don't fucking love no damn body. These streets is fueled off of fucking evil and death. And I don't know at what point did niggas think that the streets is some glamorous place to beat your chest on like this is a fucking badge of honor to be out here. For those that come from that shit, we out here because unfortunately, this the, the cars we've been dealt. So we, we do what the hell we gotta do to survive out here. But at what point do we get where we no longer want to, to live or grow through this shit? It's to the point now where niggas is like talking shit about niggas or they condemn other people who aspire to get out the damn hood. And I don't understand where did that fuckery come from? Who wrote the blueprint that is cool to be a goddamn fool? How is how can a man be corny, whack, not down, not real because he come from the slums, the ghetto, poverty, the hood, and he work his ass off to get his family up out of that shit. To me, that's what's really gangster, nigga. Not no dumb, dirty, bum-ass nigga who nickel and diamond every day for lawyer and bail money. That's the damn fool. And that shit would never be cool in my damn book. So here's part two to this whole point that I'm making. I thought about this because I've been in this situation. I've been locked up. I've been in prison. I've had to raise some of my kids through phone calls from jail. I know what that shit feel like. I know what that shit feel like when they got to come visit and then they got to leave. And then you go back to your tear and you pop some ass because you, you mad that you, someone else got more control over your family than you do. So the part two to this is, how do we get more upset at our homie or homies for not holding us down than our children who are mad at us for not fucking being there. Think about that question I just said. We more concerned with what homies is holding us down than the fact that our kids are out there with no damn father figure. Our wives out there with no men and husbands. Our mamas is out there with no sons. That don't even be our main concern. Our concern is what niggas is writing you, man. Fuck your letters, nigga. Them letters don't mean nothing. Because as far as I'm concerned, I don't remember when I was locked up, I don't remember no niggas taking that three, four hour trip down to come visit me. That's your lady going to do that shit. That's your mama going to come do that. That's your babies that's crying at the end of the night every night because you're not there. Your niggas ain't crying for your black ass. Your niggas ain't losing no sleep because you in jail. Niggas going, niggas is going write a, you know, they may write a letter to here, wear a fucking free my nigga shirt. And them niggas are still fucking bitches. They still out there popping bottles, partying, bugging, turning up with your black ass in jail. They losing no sleep. And these the motherfuckers we put all our value and all we give all our love to. We devote all our loyalty to. And I, I think back to when I was doing that shit and I, I just be like, damn, a nigga was really like on some bullshit. Not to say I don't have love for my niggas because my niggas know. You know what I'm saying? I love my niggas that love me back. But at the same time, man, I know what my priorities is at. I know who hurt when I'm not around, and it ain't your niggas. So here it go again. We be more upset that a nigga is not there for us than we are that we're not there for our own damn children, our own damn babies. It's just simple, man. You want to stay out here and you want to gangbang, you want to live your life thugging it, being a criminal. I mean, again, at the end of the day, that's your business. That's your, that's your decision. But stop making these fucking babies, man. Stop being selfish. 
And that's coming from a grown uh, uh, motherfucker who who been through these through the channels now, and I see where we're, where we're, where we're screwing up at. Because I was doing the same damn thing. The problem is, I realize a lot of us and a lot of gangsters, they're not going to want to agree to this shit. But, you know, it take one to know one. And the difference with me and a lot of them is that, you know what I'm saying, I ain't got no problem speaking up on, on my shortcomings. A lot of niggas is afraid to be different, man. A lot of niggas is afraid to step outside of that box or, or to go against the grain. And when I say go against the grain, meaning to do what's right. Because a lot of times that shit may either come with a penalty, it may come with a cost, it may come with a price. It may get you outcasted. It may, it, you may not be the most popular nigga in, in, in the neighborhood now because you're not with the shit no more. So a lot of niggas will fold and buckle and, and, and cave in to that. And that's the thing with separate me from many of my peers man i don't give a fuck about what no nigga think about me them priorities are my children my family my wife my mother and then my priorities are also my homies who do respect and embrace my change who do embrace and respect you know what i'm saying the path that i'm on but this is not just me though this this whole message is not even specifically about me is because I recognize there's a lot of others out there just like that who who have these aspirations and these goals to to want to be better not necessarily saying abandon the damn hood but god damn it that ain't where life the fuck at that's not where life is at that's not where life is at the objective is to survive and get through it and get the hell up out of there maybe you you know get in a position where you can come back to be beneficial to those coming from behind you I get that but it should not be no objective to stay stuck in a goddamn ghetto. And if that's your if that's your claim, then so be it, man. But don't hold the next man to that. Because at the end of the day, that's not where I want my family. And I don't think I don't think the average man wants to be stuck in the ghetto. We just lose hope and we lose that that fight and that determination to want to get out of there, man. But that's some serious questions that I think that y'all need to ask yourselves, fellas, when it's just you at the end of the night, when you in your house, get yourself a gut check, man. How you worried about another nigga and what he, how he, what he doing for you? But your kid's mad at your ass because you ain't there. You know what I'm saying? And like I always say, that G code versus that parental code, they're going to they gonna come to a head, man. They're going to bump heads. And you're going to have a choice to make. You're going to have a serious choice to make, man. So... Now, y'all y'all digest that, man. That's for my fellas, man. That's for the ones that's on that fence out there. That's for the ones who who, 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 who have the vision to want to be better. But, but they so worried. They so focused. They so fearful. They so afraid to be different. They can't what homies going to think about them. You better spend more time worrying about what your, your family, your kids going to think about you. It take a lot of heart to go against the norm. And even though the way we live in out here is not normal, it's the norm for the communities that we live in. And it take a lot of heart to get beyond that. I'm not saying that it's the easiest thing to do because it wasn't easy for me. Like I tell people, when I wrote my first book in 2008, when it came out, I still was into the shit, man. I still was doing criminal shit. Everything I did, I tried to tailor made or cater it to Focusing on the hood, but in a way where, you know, I didn't have to give up anything. You know, I could still be a, you know, gang member. I could still be a gang banger, but yet I could write books and shit. And then I just started getting cased up. I started getting jammed up. And I realized if you want to survive in this world outside of the ghetto, outside of the hood, you're going to have to sacrifice something. And in my case, I had to sacrifice quite a few things. You're going to have to give some things up. And it may be that power that you got. It may be that stripes and that stain that you got in the neighborhood. It may be the, the neighborhood thotties that you so used to having crawling up your ass. You have to get that thing up a little bit if you want to get to the next level, man. Digest that, eat that, man. As always, the big fool, big phone, Jawi, man. Upshot that.